Hello and welcome to General Nerdery. A week ago we did an unboxing for the Toshiba Thrive Android tablet, and now I'm back with a review. I've had a week to play with this, I've used it every day, pretty intensively, and overall my impressions of the device are very positive, but nothing's perfect. So let's cover the bad points first. First of all, in my unboxing I showed this panel here, which is where you would gain access to the USB ports and to the HDMI. My first complaint would be this door is difficult to get into, uh, especially if you have very trimmed fingernails. You can get a feel for it, but it's just unnecessarily hard to get open. Now, I expect it'll probably loosen up with age, but still, it's worth mentioning. The second point is that the volume on the device is a little bit on the quiet side. And I don't mean through its own speakers. Uh, there's only so much that you can expect out of sp the tiny speakers that they put in a device like this. I'm referring to when you're using headphones. There's really no excuse why a device like this can't provide enough power through the headphone jack. Naturally, this will vary depending on the content and how, lo how loud it was recorded, but it still feels unnecessarily quiet. Now, usually limitations like this are actually programmed into the device rather than being a limitation of the amplifier in the device. And therefore, if enough people complain about it, Toshiba will likely fix it in a future firmware update. In the meantime, what I'm going to be doing is ordering a set of Bluetooth headphones, which of course will have their own amplifier and volume control. You can also get a dedicated headphone amplifier for just a few dollars on eBay. My final complaint with the device is the camera. And I do mean the five megapixel rear facing camera, which is the one that they intend you to actually take pictures with. Now, I wasn't expecting SLR quality photos out of this. I wasn't even expecting point and shoot quality photos out of this, but I was expecting cell phone quality photos and this does not deliver in this respect. Uh, not only does it not have an LED, which would improve its indoor photography, but even under bright light conditions, the pictures just aren't sharp. It's a five megapixel camera, which is more than enough to make a crystal clear four x six or five x seven image. And the lens just does not deliver. For that reason, if photo taking is the most important thing you wanna do with your device, and I don't know why you would buy a tablet just to take photos, but if it's that important to you, this is not the device for you. Me, I don't really care. I usually have a camera with me, and when I don't, my phone takes better pictures, so no problem. So that's my complaints with the device. What's good about it? A lot's good about it. First of all, the Tegra 2 processor does not disappoint. It lives up to its claims. The device is fast, it's responsive, uh, it works great for games, it works great for uh, video. Uh, Toshiba touts its multimedia capabilities. It can play 1080p video smoothly. Um, I would note, however, that um, MKV files at 1080p do tend to chug along a little bit. That's because the MKV file format relies heavily on the CPU of your device. And let's face it, it is only a 2 gigahertz processor. My 3 gigahertz uh, old VIO computer there chugs along at with 1080p MKV, so I can't really blame a device like this. Uh, all you need to do is re-encode your videos to MPEG-4 and uh, you should have no difficulty. Uh, incidentally, the next episode of General Nerdery, I'm going to be covering video conversion and uh, with emphasis on converting for Android devices. Another good point about the device is the screen is quite easy on the eyes, and I mean that in more ways than one. It's easy on the eyes in that it's pretty and colorful and can be very bright, but it's also easy on the eyes in that it's very comfortable to look at in a wide variety of lighting conditions. Uh, this is due to two things. First of all, Toshiba has included an intelligent uh, brightness and contrast control with it, which adjusts automatically depending on the lighting environment that you're in. So in a bright room, it will turn up the brightness and the contrast accordingly, and in a dark room, it will turn them down. Uh, this means that I can go to bed, turn off the lights, and read in the dark and feel quite comfortable. Uh, and Likewise, I can be standing in a room with a big old sunlight and still read the tablet. The other way it's easy on the eyes is uh, when viewing in portrait mode, I've noticed with some other tablets that uh, because of a particularly narrow vertical angle of view, your left and right eye will see a significant difference in contrast, and this just hurts my brain. Uh, that does not happen here. It's just as comfortable to view vertically as it is horizontally. So that's a good thing. Another positive point for the tablet is the fact that the uh, HDMI out is a true HDMI out. This means that uh, unlike some other Android devices where it's only good for outputting video files and photos and things like that that you have on the device, this HDMI out will actually mirror the display of the tablet. So you can play games, for example, and put them on the screen of your television. You can uh, play internet video and put it on the screen of your television. Anything that you can display on the screen of the tablet appears to be able to display on your television through the HDMI, and that is quite nice. Speaking of ports, the reason why I bought this tablet 
Uh, besides the full-size HDMI output, the Toshiba tablet does boast a uh, full-size SD card slot, which to my knowledge is unique on the market right now. Uh, almost every other tablet, if it can take any memory whatsoever, it's taking micro SD cards, which are more expensive and uh, slower at larger sizes, they tend to be at least. Add to that a full-size USB port along with a mini USB port, so Toshiba did not spare any ports on this device, and I like that. The feel of the tablet is quite nice. Uh, it has a rubberized back, highly texturized, and rounded edges. These come together, first of all, to mean that the tablet is not going to easily slip out of your hand. You're not going to drop it accidentally. You shouldn't. I'd also like to note, as far as the operating system of the device, of course, uh, Android 3.0 is not unique to the Toshiba tablet. However, um, you may have heard rumors, if you're looking at uh, various options, whether that be Android or um, Blackberry's tablet or the HP tablet running WebOS, uh, or of course the iPad, uh, whether the Android 3.0 uh, operating system is ready for, uh, for serious use. Uh, Google themselves said when it first came out that they did kind of rush it out and it wasn't quite ready at the time. Of course, uh, it's gotten a couple updates since then, and I have to say my experience with it has been nearly flawless. Uh, not only is it a very comfortable operating system to use, pretty intuitive, uh, but um, the only problem I've had with it thus far is on uh, one or two occasions I've gone and opened the uh, Marketplace app, and for some reason none of the um, apps to purchase loaded. All, in those cases, all I had to do was leave the app, open a different app, and then come back, and even if I did it just that quickly, and everything loaded fine. It's a weird little quirk. I expect it'll be fixed in the next update, uh, but that is the only problem I've had uh, with the operating system, and uh, if that's all there is to trouble you, that isn't enough to uh, break the deal by any means. The final point I would have to say about the tablet, and this is a good point for Toshiba in general, is uh, I did have the occasion to call tech support. And um, I may have been encrypting my tablet, and I may have accidentally forgotten the password or mistyped the password more, more accurately when I uh, entered it initially, and I may have locked myself out of the tablet, and I may have needed to uh, know how to do a factory reset without being able to log in. I called Toshiba and was expecting to sit on hold for 40 minutes or so, waiting to get through to a person, and hoped that they would have the answer I needed. Uh, in fact, what happened was I sat down, I called Toshiba, answered three or four prompts to go to the correct department, and somebody picked up the phone immediately, and they did have the answer I needed. That is major points for me uh, on part of uh, Toshiba. I think that's great, and uh, it definitely increases the odds that I will buy another Toshiba device in the future. So, all in all, that's my review of the uh, Toshiba Thrive. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, but nothing is. Overall, I like it a lot. I think it was absolutely the right tablet for me. Whether it was the right tablet for you, well, I hope this review helped you decide that. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Uh, if you liked this, if you found it useful, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on General Nerdery.